Hi everybody, it's been a minute. <laughs> um, hey everyone, I don't know if anyone's tuning in for the first time, but if they are, I'm Alex, Alex Grinling. I uh, own a design studio with my wife, my lovely, lovely wife, Meg's uh, Lunar Saloon. And what are we here? Well, first of all, it's been a while since we've streamed. We have a new gadget here. I put another camera up here, so we have a hand cam, which I don't know if it will be useful or not, but it seemed kind of fun. Um, since I feel like so much of what I do on the stream is uh, unseen when it's just the screen, because so much of it is keyboard shortcuts and stuff. So now some of that stuff will be surfaced, which is kind of neat. Um, and yeah, so today's stream, today's, it's, it's not going to be, <laughs> oh, I'll get a, I'll get a fake hand. <laughs> uh, I'm not planning on today's stream being a super long one. Uh, mostly, uh, I just am here to talk about Moonrakers. <laughs> it's like that was, who, it's like Woody Harrelson on Reddit. <laughs> He did that AMA, and he's just there to talk about Rampart. So, please, all questions today, if they could relate to Moonrakers in some way, that would be great. Um, so, I'm going to be working with, or I am working with, uh, uh, IV Animation, uh, or IV Studio, I guess. They they have rebranded. Let's see. Let's let's go. Let's Let's bring them up here. So uh, Ivy is a uh, studio in Tennessee, and uh, they do a lot of animation uh, and design work. And uh, I have actually worked with them um, before uh, on Bouncy Smash. So um, they made this game Bouncy Smash, and I'll just play this video while we're talking about it. Uh, Bouncy Smash is actually a very good um, iOS game, but what uh, I worked with them on was developing all of the characters uh, and designing, uh, you know, <laughs> the look and feel of all this. Um, and we have some of that up on our site. 
so this was the stuff that I did and they took it all and made it into 3D assets. And uh, it's a great game. It's on iOS. You should check it out if you haven't. But uh, So I worked with them on that. And so they hit me up a while ago about um, uh, working on a card game that they're developing. And the card game is Moonrakers. And uh, what Moonrakers is, is I've, I've tried to put as much of the game into this little bit of key art as I can. Um, in the same way of, you know, you see like tr game trailers from Valve and all the things the characters are doing in the trailer are things that translate one-to-one -to, -one to game abilities and whatnot. So Moonrakers, uh, it is a co-op competitive uh, tabletop card game. And uh, the way that you play is you have a deck of cards and the deck of cards kind of symbolize your ship's uh, ability. <laughs> <laughs> hey Nico, Porkins is in the red ship. Rest in peace, Porkins. Um, so you basically play, you have a ship and you go on uh, missions with the people that you're playing with. And a lot of the missions are set up so that they are too difficult to do by yourself. So you have to work with uh, the people that you're playing with. Uh, and... Uh, you pull your resources, you go on these missions, the missions have, you know, damage dice that you have to roll against yourself and stuff like that to determine how much damage you take. But all the cards that you have that kind of symbolize the functionality of your ship, you use those to take less damage, to inflict more damage, to get more cards, stuff like that. So, <laughs> where... Where do I start with this? Um, so today's stream is going to be kind of an overview of the work that we've done so far. Uh, I've been working with them on this. We did an exploratory phase where we kind of looked at some of my illustrations in the past um, and figured out the look that they wanted to go for in this game. Um, so yeah, the the, the ships... and. Here, I'll just go over the colors on, on this, because it's going to come up again as we're looking at the cards and whatnot. If I were smart, I would have planned, like, some kind of script for this. <laughs> but I'm dumb. <laughs> uh, so, uh, in the game, uh, green cards, greens are always shields. So we have this um, shielded starship right here. Uh, yellows are, uh, it's a th uh, thrusters. You get thruster cards. And those speed up, um, like, the number of cards that you can draw. So it's a lot of, like, plus two cards, stuff like that. So it's like a faster ship. Um, orange symbolizes damage. Player dealt. Player dealt. Player dealt. dealt. <laughs> but damage. Orange is damage that the player deals. So this ship is all gunned up. It has one, two, three, four, five guns on it. Uh, the, uh, the, the purple ships in the game, much like purples in, um, you know, a lot of MMOs and stuff are the unique special ships. So, uh, this ship is different than all the other ones here in that it has kind of two tails. It has these two tails, like tails. It's, it's like a spaceship Sonic. Never mind. Anyway, so... Uh, it has a reactor, it has these cool floating guns that are, you know, kind of floating along with it. Um, let's see, that's the that's the speed ship. And then red in the game, red is always damage being dealt to the player. Orange is damage you're dealing, red is damage being dealt to you. So we have this ship, uh, <laughs> as Ryan said, we, we, have, uh, we have Porkins down here. <laughs> getting blasted uh so that's the over that's the overview of this how do we got to this part we got to this uh because well let's see what do we do i have the uh do i have the pinterest board up i do not so uh zach 
uh, the creative director at over at IV, uh, sent me this Pinterest board. And this board, like some some of the stuff I saved, some of, some of them they saved. We wanted to reference. Uh, they wanted to reference a lot of 70s and 80s UI. Um, so stuff like this. So if you look at that, you can see. Like we pulled a lot of the palette um, from these interfaces. Um, and then furthermore, palette and visual language and all that stuff like that. And hey, if you all have any questions while I'm working on this stuff, uh, feel free to chat, feel free to ask. Um, that's always what this stream is about. It's about learning and asking questions and whatnot. Uh, so speak up if you want. Uh, and along with that, uh, he also included some of the work that I did for my Vectober series, not this year, but last year, uh, along with this little grainy uh, handgun. So with that started, uh, we started looking at, you know, that work. Um, this is probably too grainy. I think this was my first experiment with... Um, using this grainy gradient thing in Illustrator. At this point, I did not know how to make the grains color, colorized yet. Um, so it's funny that Zach pulled that as reference for this project. Um, so we are looking at that. Uh, here's the Vectober thing. So all this Vectober stuff was largely um, an experiment with getting more comfortable doing like fake lighting in Illustrator. So you have a lot of these like points of, let's see, this one looks better. Um, so you have these like bright focal points of light that just kind of cast a soft light on the rest of the scene. Um, so the art that we ended up with for Moonrakers is kind of a mix of this grainy stuff, this lighting stuff, uh, and the work that I did for the ill-fated uh, uh, Astro Alphabet. So this you can see, you know, contrary to this, I've obviously learned at this point um, how to apply colors uh, with all my grainy gradients. Um, and just how to liven things up a little bit more. So that's how we kind of got to where we are at now. And I'm going to go ahead and close all of this stuff. And I can start showing you the cards and what things are looking like. Um, Zippy asks, how's Batman? Batman's good. Batman, uh, for everyone that doesn't know, is uh, one of my two cats. Two cats. Batman is... Weighing in at a hefty 17 and a half pounds. I don't know how that happened. Really? <laughs> we have two cats. Rocco is like a very svelte, thin cat. Oh God, I shouldn't say his name too much. If you say R's name too much, he's like the candy man. He'll show up. Um, so yeah, I don't know how Batman ended up like that. But he's good. He's good. Just, you know thick he's he's a big boy um okay so back to moonrakers i'm here to talk about moonrakers well here's a question i'm gonna i'm gonna pose this question to you all the viewers you tell me do you want to see where we started with the cards and where we currently are or would you like to work backward um, and see what the cards look like now and how bad they looked when I first made them. I'll give you all a minute to talk amongst yourselves and decide what you would prefer to see. And I will just sit here and pass the time, I guess. Start from the beginning. All right. So this is, I guess, the absolute very beginning. Um, this is, this was the like kind of uh, 
I don't know what I don't know what to call it. This is like the the equivalent of like programmer art, right? So this is how they were playing the game. So before they contacted me to do all the illustration and design work for this game, they had already designed it. They had planned it. Um, I can show you. Guys, let me hold up for a second. I'm really excited about this. One, because this is going to be a super fun project. It's a huge variety of work um, from like overarching complex design thinking um, to just drawing cool spaceships and shit. It's going to be a lot of fun. And I have a really good relationship with IV, um, who I'm working with, working on with this. And Austin over there is great. And we're like talking every day about this game. And he is totally cool with doing, um, uh, doing feedback calls on the stream so we will this is this is how i see this going we will make stuff on the stream we will shoot it off to austin and maybe at some point we'll schedule calls so that we can do that part of the process on the stream because that's a part of the process that we've never done on the stream before i've made stuff for clients before on stream um but We've never delved into the feedback part. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Okay, so this is this is where they started with. Um, I'll go over. These are the basic types of cards that you have in the game. So uh, he, over here you have a crew member. Let's see, what is Gurke Glagax? Uh, Gurke Glagax... Trash a card from your hand. Reduce the objective requirement by two in any category. Plus one action. Okay. Um, this is a contract card. So when you are playing the game, you will have eight contract cards laid out for everyone to see. And these are the requirements for R and 5D. So this is four reactors and five damage. So you have to have in your group four reactor cards and five damage cards to embark on this mission. Um, this is uh, one the, the aforementioned reactor card, which you will have in your hand. Um, and all of this is important because all of where these cards are and what these cards do determine how they are designed. So, you know, the, the contract cards are going to be sitting on the table away from people, so text needs to be a little larger um, so that everyone can kind of see it. Uh, whereas reactor cards, information doesn't have to be as big because you're going to have it in your hand. And then on the right are, is a ship part. So a big part of this game is you will have a board uh, with like a 2x4 two by, two by grid. So 8 pieces. And you will buy, uh, with the money that you get by going on missions, you will buy ship parts and build a ship. And those ship parts give you special, give you additional cards. Um, they re can really change the way that you play the game. So those are the four pillars of this game. We started... God, this stuff looks so bad now. Um... <laughs> so we started with the contract card. Um, at this point, I was kind of designing blind. So we'd had some conversations about, you know, they have 4R and 5D, and I was kind of carrying that into the cards here. Um, hey, Jeff. Of course, transparency, for better or worse, is the name of the game around these parts, when it can be. Um, unless the game's name is Moonrakers. We're here to talk about Moonrakers. Um, so... Uh, at this part, at this point, I was starting to implement some colors, uh, but working in, um, but still, you know, keeping the abbreviated R is for reactor, five is for energy, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and the big trick in these was figuring out how to fit all of this information in, a, in the card in a way that makes sense um, while... Uh, 
but also leaving room for an illustration in the middle because illustration is a big part of all of these cards. Um, the dark co is your stream delayed? Uh, probably a little bit. I kind of just respond to chat when I can in between sentences and explanations. Uh, and so as we go through here, you know, I start putting like uh, required here and the reward there. And a lot of this stuff is just figuring out how much information we want to put onto the contract cards, how much we want to label the contract cards um, versus, you know, things that the player is just going to learn um, through the course of playing the game. Hello, Nick Culbertson. Um, so, this is a lot. I know this is just like a fire hose of, of information, but I'm going over this so that next week we can hit the ground running and I don't have to explain everything. <laughs> so, so like this, think of this as like the prologue. This is the comic book that's released before the Star Wars movies comes out that catches everyone else up on what's been going on so that then they can go see the Star Wars movie and they can just enjoy it. That's what this is. I should have said that at the beginning. This is a perfect metaphor. Um, so you can see this like goes and goes. Uh, and here, you know, here for a while I was like, oh, it can just be color coded and you don't need anything else. You know that t you'll, you'll learn that red is damage, so you need 12 damage. You need um, five shields and one purple, whatever the hell that is at that time. So you can see it's starting to get more refined. Uh, for a little while, we experimented with it being tiny. Um, but here is the great thing that happened, is that in trying to make it tiny, uh, trying to make the card physically smaller, I had to pare down the information that was presented. So it was at its like purest, rawest, whatever. Um, so we worked on that, we got this down, uh, and then we decided ultimately that it was too small. We printed out the cards, you know, they were tiny, too small, couldn't read it. So we went back up. And what happened when I went back up to the normal size is that um, I kind of kept the information density that we settled on on these smaller cards um, and the bigger cards, and it worked really well. Um, whew, these, these things get a lot simpler, but there's a lot of information happening on here at any one time. So here, still trying to pare the information down so that we have enough space for the illustrations. Um, so now what, and this, this is largely gone unchanged since at this point in the process. You have what type of contract it is up here. You have the um, name of the contract. You have the rewards that you get from that contract in the upper right. And you have the requirements to embark on that contract in the bottom left. And then in the bottom right, you have the damage dice that are rolled against you um, when you go on that mission. So I'm still trying to pare it down here. Uh, get to a point, uh, you know, I thought that through this, some of the uh, point of reference of old... 80s, 70s sci-fi stuff was being lost, um, this kind of UI work. So I kind of brought back a dark background, uh, but I didn't like it. It didn't feel good on the cards, um, didn't look very good. Uh, and so from there, put in a colored uh, background. So it made it blue in this case. Um, and put the rewards here. So this is a reactor card. This has not changed that much since I kind of got this one right on the first time. <laughs> Hurrah. Uh, <clears throat> and so down here, you can start to see, um, we start nailing down. So we decide that the, because you have to have as much as eight ship parts in front of you at any one time, 
uh, decided to make those ship parts square so that you could fit more of them so that, you know, they're not full card sized uh, things that are going to be uh, taking up a ton of table space. Okay, so we got the backs of the cards. All of this shit has changed, basically. Uh, but we did get to this point, and I thought, oh, one cool way to bring in that um, UI uh, inspiration is to put little glitches uh, all around the illustration. This is a bit much. We toned it back <laughs> since then. I remember that was some of the feedback that they gave me. So when we looked at this, the two pieces of feedback uh, I got were too many glitches, it's too much, and uh, uh, it's the illustration is too grainy, too much grain. Totally get it. I agree. Um, and the other bit was we were both we both had some hesitation about the color palette, especially with these colors up here. Things were feeling um, maybe too young. It was skewing too young. It was looking more like the um, Astro Alphabet uh, stuff that we were looking at earlier, which we kind of used, you know, as a basis for this illustration style. Um, and this illustration approach is perfect when your target audience is like six-year-olds, six years and up. Um, but maybe not as great when you're making a tabletop card game. So, this is kind of most of the early design work that we did to figure stuff out, you know, get it feeling good, whatever. It's changed a lot since then. We have some questions. Jeff, is the type OCRA or did you already draw a custom typeface? The type in here is OCRA. I'm using OCR and Blender Pro. Um, Clag Hamster, what font is that? You got it, OCRA. And are you are the do am I doing the glitches manually or am I just relying on Illustrator to crash? Um, <laughs> I'm doing the glitches manually though. Probably could just rely. You can see you see recovered in some of these file names here. Um, but Jeff, to your point about OCR, uh, so I am uh, making my own kind of cut of OCR. And I've been working on that. I'm changing, um, not, I'm changing a fair amount in here, I think. So it's a, it's a fine line, um, between fixing. So I don't like fixing. I'm just making it more to my taste. Um, fixing some, um, characters and just keeping things as consistent as possible because, OCR has some stuff in here that, like, this angle of this H, I just don't like it. It like, this H looks not, it would not be out of place in a Comic Sans family, really. Um, so I've been going through and cleaning stuff up like that. Like, you know, I like this A, the C is a little rounder. It still has these, like, straight lines in here, but, um whatever but yeah like look at that h that h just kills me um and you know making some things a little more funky because i like funky things i'm not opposed to funky things in a typeface uh so we got this like weird in uh this o uh yeah and i can do this typeface because it is pretty much single weight i'm not messing with a lot of you know like fine tuning uh, character arm widths and leg widths and shoulders and whatever other type terms. Um, I like my S more than their S. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so the cool thing is I'm making this for this project, but um, IV is totally cool with me packaging this up as a font and selling it afterwards. So that'll that'll be a fun thing. Uh, but yeah, so I am making my own OCR variants for these cards. Um, all right, now I will go to the current cards. 
All right. So some things have changed, some things have not. Uh, I still included their, <laughs> their original uh, card art in here, just so we have a point of reference. I think it's kind of interesting to look at all the stuff they had in their card and where that stuff is now. Um, so we have title, title. We have what kind of contract it is, a delivery contract. And then we have just, I just put in this junk number uh, because one of the one of the like defining characteristics of a lot of those 70s user interfaces uh, are the like weird little bits of information that are kind of crammed in random parts. Um, it's very odd. So we're kind of keeping that alive here. Um, over here, just an icon for uh, uh, the contract, which is actually incorrect because I made a new icon for contract. Um, but anyway, so let, let's go from their original placeholder stuff to what we have now. You have two damage dice. We have the damage dice in the lower right, um, and it will show three. So this is three damage die, and this is, you know, the max number is you can have four. So this is just communicating the same thing, three damage. Um, it's an explore mission. We have, this is a delivery mission. We just have some junk uh, barcode stuff up here because barcodes are fun, right? Um, you, it's a $9 reward. This is a five isk, I think is the, I know, I don't know what they're using for currency, but uh, so this is five isk. And this are, these are the prestige points or reward points uh, that you get for going on this mission. And then the four R would be this one that says five. This is five reactors one shield and 12 damage is what you need to embark on this mission. So that's what that's looking like. Um, the ship parts, uh, let's see, I think these are probably, these are still a work in progress. Um, we're still tinkering because one of the things that I've learned about designing and illustrating a card game and so there's a lot of, you're juggling a lot of stuff. And we want to try to keep the colors and everything as simple and clear as we can um, so that there's not a lot of guesswork on the player's part about what something means. You know, so we're trying to make it so that green is always shields, blue is always reactors. Like anytime you see orange, you know that it's referencing the, the damage that you as a player can deal. Um, that's what's going on. Let's see. Helvetica Hero successfully subscribed. Thank you very much for that sub. For that lovely Prime sub. Y'all, if you're sitting on Prime subs, that's just going to waste. You could spend those right here, you know. We'll give you the old lumpy salute. Um, so, so, yeah, so that's what a lot of this has been, is trying to figure out what our color palette is, how that color palette relates to the player cards, how it communicates with the player, what whatever. So, all right, so moving on here to the uh, ship parts. You know, this was their ship part originally on the right, and this is kind of where we are on the left. Um, jump rockets, that's the name up here. Yellow Comac, that's the, well, <laughs> this is the um, brand of weapon, uh, let's see, $2, that's how much it costs. We have five money sign down here. <laughs> I don't know what to call it. I made an icon for the money without really knowing what to call the money. So I just think of it as five thing. Um, and the description, when you play an engine card, allies gain one additional card. Um, and 2E, that's the number of cards that you get for having that ship part. And that is represented up here. Um, so you get one two damage card and one miss card. And we're keeping these the same as I'm scrolling back and forth between these two. Um, 
So this is referencing cards and this is referencing cards. The key takeaway being that anytime you see a, a tall rectangular box, which is referencing a card. Uh, so, uh, and the other thing that we're doing in a lot of uh, the descriptions and stuff throughout uh, is where we are bolding things that are referencing cards and putting the icon next to it. So we're really doing everything we can to establish these relationships in players' brains as they're going through and playing the game. Um, dun, dun, dun. I like this guy. Um, this is still placeholder. I still have to really lock down this art. But um, So one of the other things that you can have in your card hand are crew members and you hire crew members through the store in the game uh, and they have different functions like with this draw three cards counts as a one reactor card for contracts um, and so we are putting uh, see this is these are the things there's been so many changes since we started this that like the reactor color has changed from yellow to blue blue was once the shield color a long time ago oh it's just not going to change it no is it because illustrator has inexplicably set my color to grayscale sure is that's what it did maybe if i keep clicking rgb it'll one day change it but kind of doesn't look like it all right anyway moving along um, so yeah, you have the, the name, uh, the mine engineer, what they are, it's up here. Uh, we kind of had the idea that, um, all of the, all of these things would be mug shots basically, cause they're all space pirates. So we think they all probably have a criminal history, right? So... You know, we'll have that constant over here. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Um, that was Austin at IB. I will text him. Um, Chef, I probably do have these. This thing is probably rife with typos. Um, maybe, maybe a surgent is a thing in the Moonraker's world. Um, uh, so. So yeah, so that's what these, these are the card backs and the, the card backs just have all the different things um, that are in that action deck. Um, an objective card, we haven't really gotten, I'm not worrying about that. We, we haven't gotten to that point. Uh, and then uh, these are all the player cards. So we uh, designed, I designed icons for each of these. You can see the icons up here and kind of uh, throughout. <laughs> Austin, <laughs> he said, I'm going to tweet about the stream soon. I was like, well, we're pretty far into it now. He thought that it started at 3 Central Standard Time instead of Eastern. This is a... um, so here, uh, you know, you have the simplified version. So put it in the upper left so that, um, you know, when you have these things in your hand, 
uh, you can always see what cards you have pretty easily by looking up there. And in the case of like this crew member card who um, can count as a reactor on missions, uh, there is an additional reactor icon up there. Uh, but yeah, so, but when we put the, when we put the things in here, like this, it just kind of felt big and boring. <laughs> didn't, didn't really do, uh, it wasn't an interesting card. So we thought a cool way to kind of um, liven these up and tie them back to the rest of the illustrations in the card deck is to incorporate the grain and just use the same icon, but make it make like a little tiny illustration out of it. Um, yeah, I, I think that if it, uh, if it feels like a video game UI, there's probably good reason. It's probably because I play a lot of video games. <laughs> um, so there's that. Um, but yeah, so you have, you know, your main cards, a shield, a reactor, a thruster, um, this is why we changed all the colors pretty recently, like a day or two ago. Uh, if we go back to, oh, file does not exist. Oh, okay. Well, whatever. Um, you have your damage cards, damage three, two, and one, and then your miss card, which is very heavily glitched. Um, cause this is pretty much just a junk card that fills up your hand, uh, as you're playing. You don't want them, but you're going to get them sometimes. Um, and that's almost all that we're, the, the only other thing that I've been working on is these are essentially just wireframes, uh, and figuring out how the boards are set up, the draw piles. So, you know, this is, this is what a play space will look like. You have your contract card and your objectives. You have two objectives at any given time, um, and like just roughing out, like putting instructions on these boards so that people aren't having to reference rules or rule book all the time. Um, and just letting them know, like you have eight contracts flipped up at any given time. This, you have six ship parts flipped up. You have three crew flipped up. And in the same way that we tried to pare down, um, the information presented on the cards, if we go back to the original, you know, the first um, contract card uh, compared to where it is now. Um, uh, we tried, I tried to pare down the boards, the draw boards that these things go on. And the, the big reason is to make them as small as possible so that you can have a variety of arrangements um, of your cards. Because these are a lot of cards to set out um, when you're playing the game. And so the goal is to make the board small so that you can have a many number of arrangements. So if your table is, you know, squatter, you know, you can do something like this. If it's a wide table, a long table, you can do something like this top thing here. Um, so that's the kind of stuff that I've been tackling. Um, and I mean, it seems like I've done a lot of work on this and I have, but there's still <laughs> so much more work to do. Um, how much you ask? I'm glad you asked. Let's, oh. So as far as the game design goes, oh my God, why can't I make this wider, please? Okay, I guess I'll just do this. Um, the game exists here right now in a Google spreadsheet. So this is what Austin and Zach at IV are constantly updating uh, as they uh, design the game. Um, so here we have all these ship parts and, you know, whether they are 
Uh, weapons, shields, reactors, thrusters, or special cards. Uh, we have the crew members here with names. I think the red ones are the things that are getting axed. IRXAD, thank you for that Twitch Prime sub. You're the man now, dog. Everyone, lumpy salute! Um, so yeah, so this is where the game exists right now, largely. Uh, we have the specials over here, uh, and then here are all the contracts in the game. And then somewhere there's a, an outline that they made for me that has all of the different stuff that needs to be made. So the player deck, I'm sure you're calling the action deck now. It's, things change a lot when you're making a game. <laughs> so um, terminology that, you know, we were using uh, yesterday, it changed. It's, it's different now. Let's see, I'm gonna give you all a link here. <laughs> oh, hi, Austin. <laughs> Let's see, bit. Let me, let me try to get this thing typed out right. All right, so if you go uh, there, that is the Moonrakers site, and you can go there and sign up with your email address um, to um, get updated on the game. Uh, monthly updates uh, as we make it, as the Kickstarter launches, probably. It's probably the most important thing to get updated about, uh, so on and so forth. Um, Austin, IRXAD, is my... Uh, client slash friend that I'm working with on this game um, you will probably hear his voice at some point in the process as we go over feedback and changes um, to the very things that we're going to be making on the stream uh, so yeah so there's it's a big project it's a big project um there's going to be a lot to illustrate um, as we move forward on this. Uh, there's probably still going to be a lot left to design. I think of I think of this project in two. There's the illustration aspect, you know, making these ship part stuff, um, and there is the design layer which sits kind of on top of it, and that's that's what I keep thinking of as the user interface, which doesn't really make any sense because people don't call static things on cards user interfaces um <laughs> but that helps me think of that, that that helps me when i'm thinking about this stuff um so yeah that's the overview i said that this stream wouldn't be that long but i've been talking about this game for 50 minutes <laughs> um do you all have any questions uh, about any of this? Are there any parts of the process that you are more interested to see than others? Um, you know, it's. I feel like there's probably going to be a lot more to talk about as we dig in um, and you see how I'm working on this stuff, like the fact that all these weird blobs back here are uh, gradient meshes with transparency masks on top of them I've done a lot of weird stuff to make this look the way that it looks um yeah that's that's oh shit how long how long has it just been my face talking <laughs> damn it <laughs> Very good at streaming. <laughs> Very good at streaming. Well, I hope it hasn't been like that <laughs> too long. Um, but uh, yeah, so this is this is what I was referencing. All of these weird gradient, grainy gradient uh, mesh 
transparency masks that make these blobby space dust clouds in the background here. Um, so I imagine, uh, you know, we'll have a lot to talk about once I start actually making this stuff on stream versus just presenting to you what I've been making for the past few weeks. Zach, creative director at IV, thank you for your Twitch Prime. <laughs> so, <laughs> love when my clients sub to me <laughs> on Twitch. Let's give them a lumpy salute. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I don't know. Austin, I'm sorry there is a little miscommunication about the time that this stream was starting. You want to have a phone call about it? <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'm, like I said, I'm really excited to work on this project. Uh, I think it will be great to stream it all um, because there's just such a range of work that's going to happen um, as we're working on it from the high level design stuff to um, the like nitty gritty illustration work. Um, so yeah, that's it. That's all I got for you. Guys, go to that link that uh, I tweeted earlier. I didn't tweet it, that I posted in chat earlier. Um, sign up to get notified about this game as we make it. Uh, you will, whether you like it or not, continue to get notified via Twitch because I'm just going to keep streaming it until we're done making it. Uh, until it's a physical thing that you can hold in your hands and play with your friends or enemies or people that you're forced to play games with even though you don't want to. I know that happens sometimes because that's just, that's just life. This is, I'm really, <laughs> this is a really bad way to end this thing. Uh, so anyway, so that's Moonrakers. That's what we've done on it so far. Uh, I'm super excited to keep working on this and um, see where it goes. So thanks everyone for tuning in. Um, I will keep you abreast uh, on Twitter as to uh, when or how often we'll be streaming this. I plan to do it pretty often um, because this is my this is my big project that I'm working on right now. Uh, so thanks again. Thanks for those new subs, folks. Uh, we'll be back here next week uh, as we jump feet first, head first, body first, whole body first into Moonrakers. Uh, okay, bye. Thanks. God, I'm so bad at ending these things. I'm just absolutely horrible. <laughs> bye. <laughs>